Love can break the chains of limits. The bounds of space and matter relent their references of cause and effect when met by a superior presence. The world brims with nuisance information. For too long, masses of humans have depended on the mediocrity. The idea of angels to some persons is old-fashioned and not scientific. Even though millions of persons have experienced angels, still the reality of angels is unknown to multitudes of people. This is especially sad and shameful when you consider that angels are sometimes charged with the guardianship role of being trees of life. The power to actuate the transpirational generation of life seed to humans, even from a vast distance out of a nothing, is a language of angels. There are hidden realities that exceed superbly wondrous bounds beyond the accepted norm. By spirit-to-spirit -spirit methods, it is possible to even transplant the form of seed to another natural realms, where it can take molecules from air, soil, or water to make a new seed plant or entity. If lovers separated by a small or vast distance who were knit of soul and destiny knew this secret, they could become up with angels and by a quickening generation of their love to their destined love would be able to feel, to have, and hold such a one transpirationally though light years apart. Do not laugh or make fun. This is an advanced view of the effect of atomic entanglement of two atoms, a universe apart, that are aligned. This is the double dawn, the Mahaneum, up with angels, the double camp with their sacred universal courts from which at any point to any point can be an instant contact. It is the word of God and the will of God that whatsoever is bound on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatsoever is loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. So glorious is this inhalation of word, which word can materialize a seed truly in the up with angels. Although they touch me, yet they touch me not, for their generating transrespiration is a holy act of releasing creative aura glow photo transitions owed to the real dimensions of truth and power, where the breaking of particular interference chains of cause and effect are as easily mastered and overcome as clouds that have mastered sailing across the skies. Surely, some great day I will fly away to the sky, way up high, where up with angels fly. There is much misunderstanding about the role and the appearance of angels. Take the mention and role of angels out of the Bible, and the Bible is decimated of its flow of story. Yet today there are many Christian groups who, other than cartooning angels or allowing the Christ's birth angel story, do not want any other serious attention drawn to angels as part of their operations and doctrine. Nevertheless, there is tangential connection of humans to angels. When people talk about the human race in the long ago coming from the stars, such a proposition in its ultimate reveal would not leave out the dial complex to the common interweave origin of angels, messengers, and human entities. One truth standing in front of the other truth is waiting in a very long line of manifest revelation to be revealed. This teaching, analog with angels, will be like a finger of God which flicks the first domino of air regarding angels to fall against the next domino of air until the last divergent domino has fallen. Hello, everybody out there. Well, we begin a journey, a journey about angels. And by the time we have finished this series, you will have been made into a different kind of mind because this series is the opening of the minds of the people. And I have a lot of scripture to read, so I don't know how far we can get with this subject 
But I have a lot of things to share with you about the future, too. But we'll introduce that as we can. You remember uh, in the last series that I did, Interpretation of the Lost Book of the Wars of the God, I describe how that um, Moses has this meeting at the burning bush. And we describe what the burning bush really is. It's, it's like a zith. It's like a vehicle that has escorted uh, Christ. And, uh, and uh, it is uh, from, um, you know, uh, the Father's house from outer space. And we'll touch on some scriptures and so forth. And how that um, the angel of the Lord began to converse with Moses. And this went on and on and on for some period of time. And the amount of information that was put into his mind was just absolutely, you know, like volumes. You know, like <laughs> volumes and volumes. And um, at the time, there probably were people who thought that there could be no Bible for anything like that. Uh, I didn't in the series, and I won't in this next series I'm getting into, have the time to give you all the scripture. But over a course of teaching, I will share it with you. So I want you to turn with me to your in your Bibles, if you have it handy, to Deuteronomy 5.31. This area here in the fifth chapter, verse 22, it talks about the words of the Lord that were, that were spoken unto the assembly in the mount, out of the midst of the fire of the cloud and of the thick darkness. And a great voice, he added, with a great voice he added no more. And um, it tells how that uh, this, this voice came out of the midst of the darkness and it spoke, and, and, and uh, you know, in the verse 24th verse, it said, The Lord God has shown us his glory, his greatness. We have heard his voice out of, the, out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth, doth talk with man, and he liveth. They expected that if they heard the voice of God. And this, of course, was Yahweh, or Yahweh, as other people translate it. And um, and and uh, he was representing the invisible God, being manifested in a physical body that could be seen and could be heard. And um, it goes on to say that the people just were full of terror and fear, and they eventually approached Moses and said, "You do the talking with." with this voice of God. We're, we're fearful. And, and, and whatever he tells you, then we will, we will do whatever he tells you that we should do. And so then uh, Yahweh accepted their word and said that was a good decision. Then he spoke to Moses and he said, have them go and get into their tents. But as for you, now this is in verse 31, chapter 5 of Deuteronomy, verse 31. But as for thee, stand thou here by me. I will speak unto thee all, A-L, the commandments, and the statutes, and the judgments, all of the commandments, all of the statutes, all of the judgments, which you are to teach that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess. So here then is confirmation how that God, through Jesus Christ as Yahweh, or Yahweh, was able to convey to a, a singular person and put into that person's brain and, and, and mind this incredulous amount of information, when you read it in the, in the Torah, in the five books of Moses, it goes on and on and on and on and on. It's, it's voluminous. And yet, 
He said, stand here by me, and I will put all of this, tell you all of this. In other words, I'll put this all into your mind. So here is substantial Bible evidence. It's a forensic proof that God works that way. He works this way in being able to put things into densities so that those densities can be unlocked and keep that word lock in mind because we're going to be getting into that here in a little bit so that they can be unlocked and as they are unlocked this knowledge that has been put in can begin to unfold that is an absolutely essential revelation Deuteronomy 531 are going to look at this from another scripture that Jesus taught from the from the Bible or for the Bible and it is a a very very interesting uh, scripture um, but let's first <clears throat> turn in the New Testament to the Gospel of John and let's look at uh, John 5 and we'll be reading from verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Now we're in the Gospel of John, verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Now the importance of being able to discern and to differentiate from the voice of the Lord and the voice of the satanic forces is the difference of overcoming. It's the difference of living and being able to, to continue with that life and on an, as an, etern an eternal basis with the joy and the peace that that particular life offers of quality. So the Bible says the hour is coming, and that is true because the hour is always coming. But at the same time that the hour is always coming, the hour is also now. So for all of those people who have not come into hearing this voice, the hour is coming. And for some of you, you have come to the threshold and the door which is the way, which is the path of knowledge is opening to you. And you will have this incredulous opportunity to hear the voice because the voice is going to reveal today a word in a way that many of you have never heard anything like it. Hey, people, listen. For as it says here in the 25th verse, verily, verily, I say unto you, the verily is mentioned twice. Whenever something is, is emphasized twice such as that, that's like amen, amen. Absolutely, absolutely. I say to you, the hour is coming and now is. Conjunction, and. So among those that hear, it is still in the process of coming. Among those that are ready, it is in the process of of entering into you and enfolding in you this density of magnitude and magnifold word of God. And the dead shall hear the voice of the, of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father has, has, hath life in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, and they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. The Gospel of Matthew and turn to the 13th chapter. And this begins to open up something quite deep, quite revelating. Let's start with Matthew 13, 
verse 31. And this means Jesus. Forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to the grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Now, lichen means metaphorical, symbolically. It's an example of. So this little mustard seed is very, very important. It's not just the shadow of things to come. It's not just the glass darkly. It's beyond that. It's something more showing, more revealing. It's something that is capable of being comprehended, but requires Consecra consecration to God. Now, this parable is about something that is like, descriptively, the kingdom, the king's domain of heaven. It's not the heaven of heavens, but it's the kingdom of heaven nevertheless. And it's like to a grain of a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is growing, it is the greatest among the herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Now, this is very, very important because there is a double parallel here, one on the positive side and one on the negative side. And I want to show you how that this mustard seed revelation, this little teeny, the smallest of seeds, that it contains in it, in its state of high density, all of the information necessary to grow this, this master herb that becomes like a tree that birds can lodge in. And how that this is a coordinate of revelation to the thing of God speaking to Moses and putting into his brain, into his mind, such a, con a con you know, condensed, such a deep, involved volume of revelation, but it being enfolded into his mind. It fulfill one day the words that Jesus spoke, from out of your innermost being shall flow rivers, not river, rivers of living waters. You have the potential to have within you, in this point of high density, this punctum that is so voluminous that there are more aspects of it than there are sands of the sea and stars of the universe. That's why God often took some of his his people that followed him and loved him, like Abraham Moses and Moses, Job, David, and revealed to them about the stars. Compare like the kingdom of heaven, like to this mustard seed concept, and understand that this huge, unlimited number that could not be counted, could somehow be understood by the Spirit. And that there is a fringe between the brain of the mortal person and between the spirit mind in the solar plexus that's connected with the heart and to the brain of the mind of the spirit. And there is that fringe between the physical human brain and 
the spirit mind. And being able to get into that territory enables you to do what the physical mind alone is not capable of doing or comprehending. Access. An arcanum. A-R-C-A-N-U-M. Arcanum. Of information. That in the manifest teachings, we sometimes call energy dot. An energy dot is an interesting revelation. It has and means a potential for utterances of things from far in the past. Now, that is always interesting about receiving something far from the past because in the light of the Alpha Omega in the book of Revelations, We have that which was, is that which is, and that which is, is that which is to come. And the Bible talks about going into the past, going into the ancient things, to be able to know futuristic things. And so, the energy dot is an incredible revelation and the mustard seed revelation in the 13th chapter, importance. And it is essentially awesome for a person to be aware that that particular revelation of the 13th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 31st verse, precedes by just a few scriptures the revelation in the 37th verse, and we were reading from the 31st, but in the 37th verse, where it says, he, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares, T-A-R-E-S, are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them that sowed them is the devil. And in the 41st verse, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels. Angels are so important. The knowledge about angels is essential. Is that there is something similar that has been done. And when a person you know, gets into that revelation, it is just one of the most outstanding, incredible things that can be imagined. In the 37th chapter of the book of Job, and the 7th verse, it says, He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. That is nothing to take lightly. He sealeth up. So God has done something. And the word hand doesn't necessarily mean this physical part of your body with five fingers. Because we're into symbolism here. Just like the five fingers can represent apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, the apostolic ministry. But it is beyond that. He sealeth up the hand in every man. Now, in the MIV, which is the Manifest Peace Bible translation, it takes that, verse 7, he sealeth up the hand of every man that all men may know his work. There's something about this sealing. There's something about putting something in you, and it's sealed in you, And it can only be opened by the Spirit of God. It can only be known by the revelation of God. It can only be known unto those who God is saying, all right, you're ready. Come on through the door. And here is the MIV of Job 37.7. God sets a fusion in the chromosomes of mortals so that they may depart from being beasts and become entities of a higher consciousness. Wow. You see, 
In the book of the Gospel of John, I've read this to you many times. In the book of the Gospel of John, it says, and this is so, so beautiful. In chapter 1, verse 9, talking about um, John the Baptist, verse 8, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That he was to bear witness of that light that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world, every person that is born on this planet, every person that comes into the world. There is this light of God from Christ the Lord that is put into them, but it's sealed. But nevertheless, it's in your chromosomes, it's in your atoms, it's in your molecules. And it's been sowed in there by Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ isn't going to just allow Lucifer Satan to put into your body this potentiation of the tares. And then there'd be nothing else in your human body that has an aspect for deliverance and a potential for overcoming. So when the Lord says, I am the Son of Man, I'm sowing the good seed. It's the devil that is sowing the bad seed. And this seed is in you. And it's like a mustard seed, which is like about the kingdom of, of heaven. And it's something so small and such density that it's in the chromosomes. It's, <laughs> it's in the body. And it has the potential to come forth. And it has the potential of, of knowledge. People say to me, I don't know what it is. But I feel like I existed before. I feel that I came from the stars. Of course you did. The book of Job tells us that. It asks you that very question. And it is, it is so beautiful. I will just take the moment, you know, to, to, to read it in Job 38. You know? Verse 4, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you have understanding. Just declare if your energy, if your energy dot is working. Declare if you can open the seal, if God has, has opened it in your life, has opened the door, has given you the keys to the kingdom. Declare it. Because you can, you know, once you, you have been unfolded. Once you've been able to get into this, it's in you. And when Jesus says the kingdom of God comes without observation, because the kingdom of God is within you, he's talking about the seal that he has put in every, the hand of every, per, every human, every person. He's talking about this, this potentiation for the soul. And the salvation of, of the spirit of these mortals. When I was young, I was told not to question the Bible, not to question God. Uh, ever since the age of, well, I'll say, probably six, six or seven. And... It never really sat well with me because I didn't get an answer to my question. So fast forward 30 years. I'm on someone else's website that has free articles submitted by the manifestor. Never heard of the guy before, but he's got a story of Adam and Eve, which I found very intriguing, and that answered one of my questions. Thought there were other people on this planet prior to Adam and Eve, and I finally I, I found confirmation. And it made sense. And I won't say everything that I read in that article was understood 100%. But it was doing something to my spirit inside of me. It's like my spirit understood 100%. And I knew that much, even though my mind, my fleshly mind, could only understand maybe 10. So I pursued. I read the article and I read probably 20 others on this website. Uh, the Garden West is another one that I remember. Not being aware 
of the manifesto blog at the time. Upon exhausting those articles, I did a search for the manifesto because I wanted more. Naturally, the manifesto chronicles, the seventh under speak, popped up on Google, and I began to read the intro. And you know what? I immediately <laughs> shut that page down, and I figured that the guy named Jerry was a crazy man on a mountain all by himself. It freaked me out. It was just so strange and different, and uh, unfortunately, I, I passed judgment on it immediately. But you know what? Obviously, the spirit kept calling me back. Probably took a good six months, maybe even longer. I had some strange goings-on in my life extra sensory type things i won't say perception but then again perception is perception right it's what's going on around you even though you may not see it with your own eyes but yeah i was seeing things but they weren't clear and defined but things were there and i thought i was losing my mind at a time and i ended up coming across this thing called the ascension process and so i decided that i'm only going to get into something where god is at the root of it and if I can't find that, then I am not proceeding. I was checking out a few different websites on the Ascension process, not feeling very comfortable, not seeing anything about God, except for one point when this lady that was meditating uh, states she was being attacked by a reptilian-type demon. Uh, she called upon Michael, the archangel, and he came down and battled this thing. And that wasn't quite a door opener for me, but I was also, at the time the i guess the activity was at a peak and i was on a spiritual journey and i had to do something about it so i at least had enough wisdom in me to know that i really gotta pray like my life depends on it before i get involved and so i just asked the family to leave me alone and i went into the bedroom and i got on my knees and it was actually the first time that i had done that since i was a child so at least a couple of decades and I just poured my heart out to God, and I, and I prayed the most sincere, focused prayer ever about getting involved with this ascension process, whether I should or not. And my answer was the Manifesto Chronicles, and I just about rolled over on the floor. It's like That was the furthest thing from my mind. And I need a clarification. Are you telling me to buy the Manifesto Chronicles book? Yes. And at that time... The spirit came over me, and I had become overcome with energy just brewing inside of me. It was just unlike any other experience I've ever had in my life. It was like every single atom that made up the composite of my being, my body, was energized at the individual level, at the, the individual cell structure. It was just, it was crazy. It was profound. It was uplifting. It was enlightening. I was glowing. My head, my brain felt like a charged ion, if that can make any sense. I immediately get on the website and I bought the book and... <laughs> That was the beginning of the journey. That was my introduction to Jerry. And so I like to say that God introduced me to Jerry. That was an amazing experience, and there were so many more. While I was waiting for the book to be delivered, I had discovered the website, Manifesto.com, and his broadcast archives, which I started listening to. Back then, I was working very early in the morning. Jerry's broadcast would not come on until about 9.15 at night on Sundays. I was on Eastern Time. He's on Mountain Time. So I didn't have much of a chance to listen to a live broadcast, but I was listening to previous broadcasts or even his... I would listen to his broadcast the very next day. Shortly after I get the book, I was involved in a car accident where I re-injured my back. I had hurt my back when I was in the military in my early 20s. I've never really received any treatment other than maybe lanocaine shots here and there. It's definitely spinal. I've since discovered that I have arthritis up my entire spine from my tailbone to my neck. So I've had this previous injury yet been able to manage and still could do quite a few things. Uh, I just let the pain regulate what I did that day. I never did shut down completely but I would not go gangbusters if I was feeling uncomfortable. I would pace myself. Well, I ended up getting in a car accident. A friend and I were carpooling from work. We were at a complete stop in town and a girl hit us 
rear-ended us at a boat and she was doing approximately 35 miles an hour. However, I didn't feel anything instantly. The very next day was, I was basically crawling out of bed on a Saturday. And of course on Sunday, it was a hundred times worse. And at the time I didn't like doctors. This is probably too strong to say it that way, but nonetheless, I still don't care for them. <laughs> but I was in so much pain, I had no choice. I was going to call in sick Monday, try to get into the doctors, and if my doctor couldn't see me, then I was going to the ER because I could not sit, stand, or lay down for long periods of time. I was just absolutely miserable all day Sunday. But one good thing came out of that, which is I'm not going to be able to go to bed my usual time because of this pain, so I might as well listen to a live broadcast, which I did about 9.15, Jerry came on. I wish I could remember the title of that teaching. Been trying to find it. No luck so far. But nonetheless, what was amazing was what he did at the end of the teaching. He was going to do a spirit-to-spirit -spirit healing for people with back problems. I just about fell out of the chair. I couldn't believe what I heard. He doesn't know who I am. I've never spoke with him. I bought a book from him. That's it. And he's going to do this Gentile touch for people with back problems. Definitely got my attention. And as he started going through the process of the, the hypothalamus to the pituitary, and I can't remember everything else that he said, but I could feel this warm, tingling sensation start at my tailbone and work its way up my spine, right up through my neck. And I was so filled with joy. The pain was gone. This guy doesn't know who I am. I don't even know where he is. I know he's in a different time zone. He doesn't know who I am. How is this possible? My wife was sleeping at the time. I wanted to grab her out of bed and dance with her in the kitchen. I felt so good. And I learned something. That, that God is, of course he's amazing, but he's even more amazing now. <laughs> and who's this man, Jerry? <laughs>
to show man his uprightness. I have found ransom. And I went from that point and you know, Googled and found the manifest of Yada, Jerry O'Lee. And once I got on his website, it was a life-changing experience. When the Bible says God can have us, you know, set up in a situation where we can feast in the midst of our enemy, you know, doing through rough times and with the coronavirus, I was just thinking, I was like, you know, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, because we, we, we feasting in the midst of this tribulation, the midst of this affliction. And the feast to me, for my life, is this manifested word. Because I have almost every book, if not every book, that has been published and teachings I have, the recordings, I have each and every last one of them that's available. And it's a part of my life. I listen to it faithfully. I may not read every day and do stuff like that, but I listen to it. I mean, this, this is what I do. <laughs> I listen to this in multiple, in, 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 in many ways. And I have a lot of opportunity to listen to it. So this is what I would be doing on a regular day anyway, listen to his teachings. The manifested word is a part of me. So I could never lead it. It's in my, it's in my heart. Is in my soul, is in my life. For the last past ten years, I listen to it every day, all day. But I, you know, I, I mean, I'm saying like twenty-four hours consecutively. But I'm saying I listen to it eighteen hours a day. You know, and it's just, uh, it's just a beautiful thing, and I love it. Uh, it's a part of me. I love him. He's the perfect person for me. The teachings, the way he prayed for people. You know, the way Jerry Lee prayed for people is, it changes. If you listen to it long enough, it changes you the way you pray. It changes you the way you carry yourself. It changes you the way you speak, the way you think, the way you, you know, work the warp society. You know, the way you navigate through things. So he was a, he is an extraordinary individual sent from God. I just cherish the blessing that God has bestowed for me and my family and the way uh, God used Jerry to help change my life around. Um, and I'm just super, super happy for that and thankful to the Lord. Jesus knew what stick to use for uh, me. And he is the perfect stick. I love him. Uh, his everything about his character and you know some of the hidden wisdom jokes he used to make you know all that type of stuff his personality his, his sense of humor his caring for people like this this is almost unheard of if you're not blood related the way he cared and prayed for people and healed people on a continuous basis the which is where the and for the, the followers of the manifest uh, ministry, for all those that I have met and spoke with and have not met, they're wonderful, beautiful people. And I love them to death. And it seems like, you know, all of us have a particular uh, job, a uh, mission that we're on. And I think all of us is supposed to stand in the gap for each other. And I want to thank God for Janet Lee, my mother sister. We have a mother sister uh, ministry too. She is a beautiful, beautiful person, a beautiful soul person. Uh, and I'm going to share a thing with the teachings. Like you can't have Jerry without having her because her organ playing and singing is incredible to me. And a lot of songs that I didn't know prior, I have learned from just hearing her melodies on the on the organ and the grand piano and the things that she played and, you know, uh, her relationship with Jerry and two beautiful souled people. And I love her myself too. And she is my mother, sister, and we share a great um, relationship. And, you know, as followers of the Manifesto and the Destinados, we got to always, you know, be mindful of each other. 
and I always pray for each other. And every time my mother sister talks to me on the phone or whatnot, she always say, Myra and the girls always pray for you and your family and Jerry Jones and his family and, and things of that nature. And I'm, and that, I'm so thankful for Myra Lee, Bim, Stara, and everybody else that have a connection to Jerry and going through different stages with out physically seeing him or being physically able to talk to him. I just want to say, share that particular part right there. And then I just got two more things I want to say and I'm a pretty much in this, but I can talk, <laughs> I can talk for days and months and years about the love of God and how merciful God is to connect me and how wonderful and beautiful Jerry Oli spirit person is and how incredible of a stick that he is. I look back at the website, all of those messages and stuff was, when he was writing them, they were stuff to read. And, but now reading them is more deeper to me. It's more of a, uh, more of oh you know oh this okay now nah, okay yeah now i can see what's going on in society now i can you know kind of connect the dots on that and this type of stuff i'm talking about it just Just a beautiful, beautiful thing. The Father's House Revelation. Wow, what an incredible revelation that uh, Jerry <laughs> revealed to us, you know. Let's just keep believing and trusting God. Because the Bible do teach, if God is with you, who can be against you? I love you. John chapter 14 Then Jesus said, I am going away to prepare a place for you, that where I am you may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not true, I would have told you so. Lord, take my hand and lead me. Lord, take my hand and lead me, Lord, lead me to that wonderful, that wonderful world. Oh, Lord, take my hand and lead me, Lord, take my hand and lead me, Lord, lead me to that wonderful world. The world I dream about is a wonderful world Where people laugh and play And love is for every day There spans the gates of time Like diamonds they shine and shine a place of peace and love What a wonderful world A world I dream about Is a wonderful world A wonderful place to be 
with thousands of things to see. There spans the gates of time like beams of light divine. Where morning glories climb, what a wonderful world! Oh Lord, take my hand and lead me. Oh Lord, take my hand and lead me, Lord, lead me to that wonderful. That wonderful world, oh Lord, take my hand and lead me, Lord, take my hand and lead me, Lord, lead me to that wonderful world, a world I dream about. It's a wonderful world where people laugh and they play, and love is for every day. There spans the gates of time, like diamonds they shine and shine. A place of peace and love. What a wonderful world! Well, there's honey in that rock, can't you see? There's honey in that rock for you and me. There's honey in that rock, way on that mountain top. Honey in that rock, can't you see?